Hello, welcome to Wargo Miniatures. I'm Jim, and today we're going to be painting Vandarendra the Snake Demon from Reaper Miniatures' Dark Heaven Bones line. We'll be using Army Painter Speed Paints and War Paints as usual, and we'll be focusing mainly on the snake scale pattern. Let's get to it. I had primed this miniature with an anti-zenithal spray of golden high flow acrylics, quinacridone magenta, and then a zenithal spray of Vallejo's white primer. Though this isn't the focus of the video, it did give it a great effect for the flesh, which I'll show at the end. Starting with pallid bone speed paint, I base coat all of the scales, including the underbelly. Without waiting for the pallid bone to dry, I add two thick strips of hardened leather down the back of the tail, trying to space them evenly. I then add a thin strip on either side of the snake belly. For all four of these strips, be sure to carry them all the way down to the tip of the tail. With dark wood speed paint, I add zigzagging spots all the way down the darker strips, as well as down the two thin strips flanking the belly. I let the speed paint dry and then hit it with a can of Tester's Dull Coat Matte Varnish, then come back with Mr. Weathering solvent mixed with Multi Black and pin wash the entire tail. Finished with the speed paints, I swapped to the Armory Painter's War Paint line using Cobalt Skin to dry brush the edge of the scales within the dark strips. I then dry brush the edge of the scales for the lighter scales in between the dark stripes using Mummy Robes. With the dry brushing done, I thin the mummy robes left on my palette down to a glazed consistency, and then add some volumetric highlights to the underbelly that light would make the most contact with. I then edge highlight all of the underbelly scales with brain matter beige. Oddly enough, I haven't experienced dyslexia with anything in my life except brain beige matter. I mean, brain matter beige. Did you see what I mean? I didn't like how stark the underbelly glaze highlight of mummy robes turned out to be, so I thinned some of the remaining cobalt skin on my palette to a glaze, and then softened the edges to give the highlight a more gentle transition. This is the final result. I had a lot of fun painting the snake scales, and admittedly I was really afraid of how hard it was going to be, but it was pretty easy and I experienced no stress after picking up the brush. The pattern was based on the small eastern gardener snake, which is common here in Georgia. The next time I paint something with a snake body, I will try another common Georgia snake I encounter every year, the white oak runner. It's another harmless snake that preys on the eggs in my chicken coop, and this last summer I pulled a six-footer out of a nesting box but I always take them downhill and let them go on their merry way. They are harmless to me and my animals and they keep the rodent population down. Finally, at the start of the video, I mentioned I would show how the anti-zenithal spray of quinacridone magenta affected the flesh. Here are some images demonstrating the transition away from magenta as you change the angle, making for a great effect. I apologize for not demonstrating with real-time video, but trying to add it out the breasts would have been a pain. I'll do this again in a future video with a miniature that has no nude aspects. It's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you learned something or inspired to start or expand your own collection. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content of this video, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time, and I bid you a fond farewell. Until the next video.